Hi, welcome to Talks at Google. I'm Shweta Devecha. I work in India's go-to-market team as the country operations manager. And I'm presenting to you none other than Archana Sardana, who is India's first and only woman base jumper. Base is essentially building antenna, span, and earth. She's an accomplished skydiver, mountaineer, and scuba diver instructor. Archana has done 335 skydives, 45 base jumps across the globe, and is a master scuba driver trainer from India. She's also performed a free fall skydive from a height of 30 and a half thousand feet and base jumps from a 400 foot high bridge in Utah and from the KL Towers in Malaysia. In case you didn't know, 400 feet is about a 40 story building. Whoa. She has five Limca Book Awards and a Guinness World Record for her in her name. Her mindset and attitude is an inspiration, and I look forward to unpacking the exciting Archana Sardana. We welcome her to Talks at Google. And just for our live listeners, uh, for any live questions you may have, there's a chat box at your right. Feel free to put in any questions you may have, which we will take at the end of our session. Welcome Arch Archana to Google and to Talks at Google. Thank, Thank you, you so much you. for being here. Thank you, Shweta, for calling me. Thank you so much. We're very, very honored to have you here. And so we just like to uh, get right uh, down to it. Uh, so tell us a little bit of, about your background, um, how you developed the passion for the sport, uh, and how you started out uh, really uh, practicing the sport. OK, uh, I have been brought up in, a, in Srinagar, Kashmir. I was, a, you know, I was the youngest sibling, uh, youngest child, you know. I have uh, three siblings. And uh, being youngest, I was the most pampered one. So my life, being brought up in a business class means, you know, all luxurious life. You don't even have to walk a kilometer. It was like, you know, just go anywhere by car. And moreover, my life was very protective. I had two brothers. Wherever we used to go, it was with brothers or driver or mom, dad. So uh, this was my background, and uh, that time I I never liked adventure sports. I remember when we were a child, we used to watch the TV and see people, you know, doing base jumping. Basically, that time we didn't know that it's base jumping. So I myself used to say, "Oh my God, what crazy people are! They? Why are they doing it? And what is the need of doing it?" I'm talking about, you know, when I was five year old, and then I had joined NCC, and once I went for trekking and thereafter I said this is not my cup of tea I cannot do it it's so boring so life took you know 360 de uh, degree turn when I got married and everything came on a platter kind of at the at the beginning and thereafter once I had got I mean so addicted to it then you know the struggles and everything uh, started so yeah so this was the basic yeah so what was, when did you decide to do base jumping and, you know, and what was the, tell us a little more about the first time you actually tried it and how did you get, uh, how did you decide to pursue it uh, with this much passion? Yeah, I'll just tell you about my story, how I got into adventure first. I mean, now uh, when I got married, I think my husband, he was in the Navy, he took premature retirement. So he was a submariner in the Navy. So he was more into adventure sports, you know. And there they used to have all the opportunity of doing it. So I remember when I got married, after two days of marriage, there was a walkathon. And that was, uh, we were posted in Vishakhapatnam. So the walkathon was for 51 kilometers from, you know, naval base to Kalinga. And 51 kilometers, it's quite a bit for me because I've never, I had never walked. So my husband was taking part and uh, all of a sudden, you know, excited, newly married. Oh, even I want to take part. So I took part and he was like, are you sure you want to? I said, yeah, yeah, I want to take part. And, I, and to my surprise, I was able to walk 51 kilometers, though I had blisters in my feet. In my feet, I had blisters and uh, I was the last one to come. I mean, I was last in that team already. So that was the first time. And somehow my husband got an idea. You know, she is very determined. She says something and she does it. So that was his mindset. So after that, we went for a honeymoon to HMI, 
Himalayan Mountaineering Institute. There was no other place to go. So there uh, we enrolled in adventure course. And adventure course was like, uh, in adventure course, they, they make you in different, there are different groups basically, which they call their ropes. So there they made me, uh, you know, a leader of one rope and one rope was my husband's rope. And there were 10 ropes altogether. So every morning he used to say, Ujja, just get up. I said, kisi ki karni ho. I'm not going to get up. I want to sleep. So he says, okay, find somebody from your rope will come and, you know, wake you up. And he used to go and somebody used to come and then I'm like, oh, shit, I have to go. So, and to my surprise, again, when it was, and they have competitions, you know, competitions among themselves, all the ropes. So there were competitions and my rope came first and his rope came last. So that was again, you know, I am able to do something. So thereafter I started, I went for my basic mountaineering course. I, I got A grading. I was, you know, and then suddenly then I, I had my two kids, they were born. And in between I was doing all bungee jumping and rafting and all kinds of activities. So thereafter I had uh, interaction with some of the skydivers because life is like more to, you know, whatever it is. It is never less. You have something else to do. There's always some eager, some thirst. So I was like, after this something. So there comes skydiving. But before skydiving, something happened uh, with my health. I had back issues. I was bedridden for four months. So I went to the doctor and he said, Ke, what do you want to do? I said, I want to skydive. He says, you can't even drive a car. How are you going to skydive? I'm like, no, no, I have to do it. He said, aap to bhool jao. You cannot because I have compression at the back. So I said, okay. So the moment I was out and I was able to walk, I went to the gym, strengthened my back. And then I went for my skydiving. And to my surprise only, I did 51 jumps and I came back with my B license, B, C license. So thereafter, it was like skydiving. Ho gaya. What next after 200 jumps? Basically, there's a, there's a, a line you have to finish 200 jumps to attempt something but generally people don't do it they do thousands and thousands of jumps but don't attempt so after 200 jumps it was like okay let's do something more you know and then got into these jumps so it was like very nice experience and i just <laughs> wow wow no that is that is pretty inspiring and especially um, you say that you started this pretty late in life, right? Like, I think uh, typically you see a lot of athletes, a lot of sports people who start out very early in life. So I think the, the takeaway here is that it's never too late to start. You started this after you were married, uh, you know, well, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, in your mid-20s. And so uh, I think that's that's truly an inspiration. Um, so tell me more, Arjuna, in terms of, uh, you know, how were you able to really prioritize this passion of yours over uh you know your uh your responsibilities as um uh, a mother uh over your uh, responsibilities in general as a as someone who's part of a family right how are you able to actually focus on this uh how are you able to i i do know that you have an interesting story of how you were able to fund uh some of this uh fund this passion so can you tell us more about that yeah my i have two boys now they are like one is 22 and one is 20. so uh when i started in 2000 i mean uh, 2007 my uh, skydiving thing started so that time they were pretty young and uh, they were in boarding but then my thing was whenever they are home then i used to give them 100 percent time nine months they were in boarding so nine months was the time when i had to achieve something or keep doing something so that was and my husband being a defense officer he was you know all by himself so he never wanted anybody at all so he used to look after and in laws and stuff, yeah, they were always against doing it. But then, you know, subsequently they have to accept it the way you are. But then, uh, yeah, life has given me beautiful kids who used to feel proud, who used to encourage me. Basically, everybody, my husband and kids used to encourage me. And they were my strength. That is why I was able to, you know, play all the roles and responsibilities. of them. No, I think that's wonderful to note. And I... Uh... I, I think you're fortunate uh, to have a very supportive uh, I family. Always, I always say I'm blessed. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's I think it's it's nice to count our blessings once in a while as well, right? So thank you for reminding all of us, uh, just like in this moment, to think of and be grateful for what we have. Um, 
So Arjuna, tell me a little bit about what this pursuit has taken you through, right? Um, what are your highlights uh, over the last uh, the, the last 15, 20 years of this uh, following the sport? And um, what are some of the lowlights as well? I'm sure you've had your own set of setbacks, injuries, etc. So if you can talk a little bit about your high points as well as your low points and uh, how you've emerged stronger from them. Uh, high points is like... Uh... Initially, I was shy. I was like, I was being the youngest kid. I never had the opportunity to talk. You know, it is always, uh, you know, elder ones are always talking, and younger ones are naughty but quiet and shy. So that uh, I have overcome that, and moreover, I have become strong. I mean, mentally, I have become strong. At times, for me, it is very good. But for other person, it becomes little, you know, little dicey at times because you are not scared. <laughs> I mean, they feel little insecure because you are like Joe. Because if you are, uh, see, you are doing all kind of activities, which are maybe I go today for my base jump. Maybe I'll not come back tomorrow. Because base jumping is a sport which is so risky that within one second things go haywire. And I have seen my friends dying. When we used to, when we went to Kuala Lumpur, there was one Australian lady which was like came and the way it all happened, the accident, and she was no more. So it was always that whenever you go for base jump, you should have someone to accompany because somebody should be there who can carry your body, you know. So it was always in our minds and when you're doing these activities, you're like, yeah, you're not scared of anything. Basically, you are kind, you, you always, they say, you always knock at the door of the death and come back. It's more like that. So it has made me strong. It has made me determined again. It has made me, you know, love my life, value my life. I don't know what will happen to me. You know, that is, kal hona ho, kal kisne dekha. These all things, it makes sense, you know. Pehle to we used to, you know, just listen to all these sayings and stuff. But after doing this, you value that. I mean, whatever is, it's today, not tomorrow. So we think, oh, 10 years down the line, we'll do this, this, it. It's useless, it's baseless. Live today. Today is your day. Today is your time. Gone is gone. Future is still, you don't know whether you'll be able to see that. So this has made me, yeah. And I met with a lot of accidents. I mean, um, first time I went for my, uh, I was I was in Arizona. So I was doing my sky uh, skydive. And uh, I just jumped. And, you know, you get vibes sometimes because something is going to happen today. You know, you get that thing. So I jumped and... Uh, you generally you jump at at one altitude when you reach around four or three five you open your parachute and i just opened it and uh, when it's open you get a pull basically you know that something is open and you are comfortable you don't you know uh, uh free fall that time because the parachute is there and i'm like oh my god still i'm uh, you know i'm just uh free falling there's nothing and when i looked up there was no parachute there was nothing and i could see the ground coming to you know coming to me very uh, very fast so i said oh shit and then i started my procedures you know you okay in uh, skydiving you have two parachutes if one something happens to one you can always deploy the reserve one so i started my uh, procedure and i was like 700 feet when my reserve opened and trust me everybody there thought that i'm gone I want me. Oh, how long does it take from 700 feet to get down to if you're in free fall? One uh, second. One oh, second. Oh, wow. Second. Okay. I mean, if you're falling like that. That's what it is. That, exactly. So it seems like 700 feet is a lot, but it's like. No, it's just numb. And it is like, and then when I was down, I'm like, okay. And to my surprise, I just took everything so nicely. That I was not scared. I knew if I fall, what will happen? I'll fall on my face and what will happen? But then there was no that you know fear inside me. And I was I was myself, you know, uh, uh this thing uh, surprised. I was myself surprised. 
Okay, after that, I went for my base jumping to KL Tower and I was jumping. It was my first jump and I had hired a parachute. Now, whenever you hire something, they have to be according to your, uh, you know, structure, your height, your weight, basically. So I hired and they had the bigger canopy. They didn't have the smaller one. So I said, okay, fine. I am a person who takes risk at any point of time. I said, okay, karna hai, to karna hi hai. I don't take a back step, you know, because the equipment is not there. My size is not there. I'm not going to do that. But then that is, again, a calculative risk because I know I can take care of myself. Until and unless it's beyond me, it's something different. But as far as whatever I know about it, I know how to handle it. So I jumped and there were little winds. And uh, in uh, uh, base jumping, there's not actually a uh, landing area. You have to find one. So in a very limited, you know, space there. So I jumped and it was a little windy and there were a lot of trees. So my parachute got stuck in a tree and I came with a force. And I had to, luckily, I could reach the ground, but then I had to stop myself with my feet, my legs. And I got injured. But then that time it was trauma. So I did not realize, you know, what has happened. So I went and I said, I'm going to back to my hotel. And I remember at the moment I reached my hotel, I was howling. I was crying because it was so painful. And then after it, it and this uh, festival in KL Tower, it is for four days. People come from all over the world to do base jumping. And that time it's legal. And uh, from India, it was only me. There was nobody else. So I was like, I cannot go back like this. I have to, you know, make a jump. But then I was not in a position to make a jump. So I, fourth day, last day, I remember I went again. I made a jump and I came back because I never wanted to come with that thing that I have got injured. And that would have created fear in me. So I learned that, you know. So just fight your fears and come back. It's more like that. Yeah, I think it's an interesting theme I'm picking up, right, when you're talking about this. And I want to unpack that a little more. Um, you say you got injured the on yeah. like on day one, right? Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you were howling and there was a lot of pain. And you still somehow managed to convince yourself over the next 48 hours that I'm still going to go. And on day four, I'm going to still, you know, do what I came here for. And where does that strength, where does that determination come from? And that coupled with your your ability to just put your fear aside and say, it's fine, it's okay. No matter what happens, I still want to do this. Uh, basically, what happens when you start thinking too much, you overthink. Yeah, you start overthinking. So it is something, it is not that your body is giving up. It is never that. If your mind gives up, everything gives up. So basically, if your mind is strong, you can you can just, you know, overcome any hurdle. That is my experience. Of it. Wow, I think that's so. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a deep it's a deep thought. And tell me, is this something that comes with practice? So were you as strong willed uh, in terms of and, and as fearless um, the first time you uh, jumped or, or uh, dove versus some of the more recent times like has this has this mindset built over a period of time or, or has it always been there i'll give you one more story you know i have a lot of stories so when i went for skydiving i knew what skydiving is but actually i did not know what skydiving is i mean you don't know until and unless you don't do it you don't know right so i went there i remember i went to us for the first time and i did not know what halloween is and I ended up on drop zone on Halloween's night. And uh, I had booked in IHOP, which happened to be a dormitory. I thought it's a hotel, but it happened to be a dormitory. But then in the night I landed up, I had no choice. I had to be there. And I remember I was, I was just sleeping and there comes all kind of noises and people dressed up in, you know, in very different manner. I mean, you was, I was scared also. And being Indian, you know, there's one thing in your mind. You always want your space. 
which is very secure. Rest, you're not bothered. For me, it is very important to have my space and security for my own self. So when I saw them, I was so scared. I didn't know how to react. I was just lying down on my bed and, you know, just uh, taking my blanket over my head. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I supposed to do? So morning I went and I made my first jump. I got trained. I went. I made my first jump. And when we came down, my instructor asked me, how was the jump? I said, I don't know about the jump. I need a place to stay. I don't know what will happen in the jump. I don't recall anything, but I need a place to stay. That is more important. So after that, I had a place. And from next day, I started, actually, I started jumping. Yeah, jumping when you go and you start and when you have to stand there and look down where you're going to land. Initially, you had some jittery feeling, you know. But I, with this one very strong thing in me is I don't think. If I have to do it, I will do it. I will be standing on the edge. And if somebody says jump, I will jump. I'll not say, oh, eight minute rook jump. It's not in me. So that is the, you know, that is the best part. When you have to do something, don't overthink about it. Just do it. And have you applied this in other areas of your life as well? I mean, I can understand you applying it at the edge of a you know, at the edge of a plane that you're jumping out of. But has this attitude also helped you in other parts uh, of your life outside of your uh, passion for sports as well? This ability yeah. not to overthink and just do things. I think I am in my own set. I know what uh, actual happiness is, to be very honest. I know I have to be, you become, you won't say selfish, but you have, you create self-love yourself so whatever it is you are there you are there but i am there first you have to look after yourself and moreover you can ignore and live in your life you don't have I, it is not what other person is doing it's what i am doing you know in your own space yes and moreover uh, i have taught my kids also i said what you like you do it you don't have to force yourself to do something which you don't like you know that is most, most important. In fact, uh, day before I was talking to my son and he only told me, he says, you know what, mom, you always tell me that. When I was young, you used to say, you spend your time whomever you want to. You do whatever you want to. Don't force yourself. If you like it, you do it. So that is, uh, yeah, that is, now I've become like that only. I mean, it, it helps me a lot. Well, that's inspiring. And I think this is the, uh... I think this talks well to our uh, the the title of our talk today, which is letting it go, right? Uh, and your ability to just let it go. Um, and I think it's inspiring just to listen to you uh, talk about how you let go of fear. Uh, you put yourself first. And there's one more thing. And there's one more thing which I've learned. What you have done is you have done. You cannot keep carrying that all the time. You know, karliya, karliya, na. That was the time. It's done. But you cannot keep boosting about it. Oh, I've done that. You can't live in past. You have to live in future. Uh, sorry, you have to live in present, not future also. So future, may whatever you want to do, do it. No, but then live in future. Yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great thought uh, for, especially for a weekday morning for most of us listening. Um, Achana, tell me a little bit about uh, your uh, training school. I know you started a training school. Uh, tell us more about it. What's your vision for it? What What does it do? Okay, uh, uh, Scuba Diving Foundation of India. We have opened that is on mainland. What we do is okay. Again, you know stories. Everything is related to story. I learned swimming with my kids only when they were like. It, when they were yeah they were learning that time i learned with them though i had tried a lot of times but i i could so learning is uh yeah so then we went to port blair and i did my um, open water course along with my kids but then my elder one he couldn't do that time because uh there was this norwegian instructor and norwegians this you know uh people outside india they are very open to adventure sports you know when their kids are six months old they just put their kids in water and let them you know 
let them swim, let them learn swimming. So where, what happened was uh, my kids, they learned when they were like six, seven. And uh, uh, after that, what happened, uh, we went and uh, he was not able to, uh, I mean, uh, teach my son properly. There was some problem. There was some communication gap. And then when I had done, I asked him, I said, uh, uh, Pranav, did you do this? He says, no, nobody told me to do that. And when he did that, he was able to die basically so then i got an idea i said whatever it is the first step is always in the pool so why can't we open an academy on mainland where people can come and uh, fight the fear of water you know and teach them they don't have to go to the sea directly they don't have to go to the sea at all in fact they don't like it but they can come to us and take that fear of water out of them so we opened it and uh, we introduced this to a lot of schools, a lot of uh, clubs. I've not approached the corporates to date. <laughs> but then uh, people learn and uh, they become confident in water. And the people who don't like swimming, once they've done this course, they get into swimming. They learn swimming because what we teach is a foundation course. And if they have to do their open water and keep diving, they have to be a swimmer. So that is, and uh, moreover, a lot of people are going to the sea, honeymoon, couples, they come to us, they say, okay, fine. It's, it shouldn't so happen that we go to the sea and we are not able to do it. So they get trained here and then they go up and it, they are able to do it. They become con a, very confident in water and with the, how, how you do scuba diving basically. And this is, uh, which part of the country is this based in? We are based in Greater Noida, but then we go all over. We have a van, we have put all the equipments there, and we go to wherever there are pools, and they call us, we go there. Wow, that's, that's lovely. And I think, I hear you say that this is not only for children, but it's for people of all ages. Yeah, yeah, all ages. We, we, in fact, we trained 85-year-old also. And you you should actually see when the elders learn, the confidence they get, the, the way they boost, you know, and the way they talk about it, it is amazing. And that gives you more of, you know, more of vision, more of good thing that you're doing something for some people who needs it. And moreover, I have done for disabled people also. It runs for disabled people. I had one uh, guy who had uh, who had a problem he couldn't walk so we did with him also that scuba that's and this is a diving course so you actually yeah. teach diving deep sea diving basically wow that's that's pretty fascinating and tell me i mean arjuna i think um, deep sea diving in india right i think it's a very very niche sport uh, you'll find very few uh, people who truly follow it with the kind of passion uh, that you do um what do you think we need to do uh you know as a society uh as a country to really uh encourage people to do some of these uh sports to learn them and to just branch out away from your big uh popular sports so what happens is i'll tell you these adventure sports i'm talking about especially it is not that nobody wants to do it it all credit goes to our parents, you know, who has fear in them and who puts their fear in their kids. Uh, you know, uh, the, say you give a matchstick to a, you know, kid, they start playing with it. They don't know what fear is. What we say as a parent, what we do is, ye mat karna, don't do this, you'll get hurt. They don't know what hurt is. So basically, it is only parents' duty who can encourage their kids to do it. It is individual thing. See what happens until and unless you have not uh, experienced something, you don't know how you feel about it, right? We are carrying that fear in our, or maybe we say we don't like it. You have not tasted it. How can you say you don't like it? Until and unless you've not tasted pizza, say, you don't know whether it's good or it's bad. If it's good, you will continue eating it. If it's bad, it was an experience. You didn't like it. Right? So, same goes for your adventure activities. Try, not only adventure, every aspect in life, 
at least try take a first step no take a first step see try if you're not able to do it leave it there's other ways and other things to do so yeah this is what i feel and moreover yeah we need to have more and more academies like mine we used uh, motivation speaker is like um, they can motivate to people who really want to do it you know i mean i think <laughs> at the end of the day i say if you really want to do it you would do it i'll give you my example i uh, my husband being in the navy financially we are not that way to you know spend so much so i had to mortgage my jewelry i had to mortgage my house we had to take loans for my passion you know to pursue my passion i had to do all this so if you have passion in in real sense you will do anything and everything to you know reach and uh, do that thing and how do you inculcate this passion in your children archana they have seen me doing it first of all you know they have seen me doing it i remember again um, there was this uh, when my kids were like 2 1 uh, 2 and 4 so there was one uh, uh, one crane had come for bungee jumping so i had that day i had two choices there was uh, my naval party or i go for my bungee jumping so what we did was we took our kids we went for bungee jumping and at night 2 o'clock my turn came for that bungee and my kids were watching so doing you know in front of them and you know talking about them and giving them all the assurance and you know discussing yeah that uh, makes them you know get into it in fact my kids are into ice hockey they are unicycle they are in soccer horse riding so all these things you have to encourage them you don't have to put them and talking about encouragement uh you know you're india's only female based jumper uh, why do you think uh, female in- involvement in sports in general and especially in adventure sports in india is so low and how do you think uh, more women can participate uh, in um, such sports okay first of all uh, it has to be a passion first of all second you have to try thirdly you have to get encouragement from the family basically you know indian women whatever said and done these kind of activities are like you don't know as i told you they are very risky activities so even the parents i mean if they have some fear i will not blame them because kids are still kids at every stage and every point but then you have to think one thing that tomorrow while you know crossing the road you might meet with an accident and you know more it's happening so at least give them that opportunity to try and live their life don't come in their way first of all secondly you should know the proper places to go for the for your training i mean there are a lot of uh, uh, academies there are a lot of places where you can go but then the right place you have to you know search for the right place to go because the first of all you have to be very careful with the safety measures you get into anything but safety is first so what safety measures that company is taking how are they conducting you have to be aware of all these things so majorly secondly yes go out of the house because nothing comes to you easily so you have to leave your uh, leave your comfort zone and struggle a bit to get everything and that is a fun that's really a fun and you so, can contact me anytime in case you want something or you can want any kind of you know help from my side I'm always there thank you archana i think that's uh, that's very heartening to hear and i think it's so important for um, rock stars like you to really uh, you know spread the light and uh, encourage uh, other people to uh, follow their passion and their pursuits um before i get to uh, my uh, last question for you which is really looking forward i just want to remind all our live viewers that you can um, i'm going to be moving into live questions shortly so uh, the chat box on the right of your screen feel free to uh, type in any questions you may have for archana we're going to get to the live questions soon archana um, you've achieved a tremendous amount 
uh, over the last um, couple of decades when it comes to this sport and your passion. Um, you're also a Guinness World Record holder. Um, what is in store for the future? When you look ahead, what is it that excites you? Uh, what do you have your eyes set on? Uh, what's the next big uh, leap, uh, pun intended, uh, you want to take uh, as you look forward? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you one thing. Whatever comes in my way, I just take the opportunity to do that. There's one skydive Everest. I want to do that. There are a lot of things. Actually, I mean, there are a lot of things. I don't know what to say. I want to now. I want to travel and I want to keep jumping wherever you know I go. I want to skydive, I want to base jump in every country, every continent. And you know, yeah, with Indian flag, of course. That's my dream thing. So let's see when and how it comes. That's the main one. Rest is, yeah, biking, going for uh, treks, going for, you know, a lot of things, maybe Everest at one point of time. So it, it, it all depends, you know, when and how. <laughs> but it will happen. Eventually, it will happen. Yeah, it's very interesting how you've kept an open mind, right? You're like, there's so many things I want to do. And who knows when, I, but it will happen. I think that's... This one more thing I want to do. I want to train as many girls, as many women in scuba diving as I can. That's a major thing. I mean, whenever I'm on mainland, it has to be. So that is one of the, you know, major things I have to do. Just explore, give explore, uh, exp uh, give exposure to as many women as I can in scuba dive. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a good thought. Before we move on to audience questions, um, what's your favorite amongst the four? I mean, there's, uh, the the bungee amongst all the four that you do. What's your favorite and why? Okay, I like all of them actually. I mean, I like all of them. I can't. They, yeah, but the most enjoyable is scuba diving because then you don't have to think much about it. Because when you're doing base jumping or skydiving, you have some procedures if something goes wrong. But in base, uh, in uh, scuba diving, it's just the beautiful world underworld. You're you are in different zone altogether. For that matter, in skydiving also, you are all by yourself. Nobody's around and you can talk to you yourself. You can do whatever. But, uh, you know, uh, in scuba, you can see the different world. You can see fishes, how they behave. In scuba also, they have their own, uh, you know, regions where once you enter, they are a little, you know, jittery about it. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Archana. Uh, I think uh, this may have encouraged uh, a lot of people like me to try at least one uh, of uh, some of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must. <laughs> I, I, you are know. missing something. You know, if you don't get into something like this, you're missing. At least, that's what I'm saying. Try once. You'll come to know whether you like it and what you were missing. What's your top... Uh, recommendation for a skydive spot that for if somebody over here listening wants to do their first skydive or their first scuba dive um yeah. what uh, location would you recommend for both skydiving go, yeah you can go to us you can go to a skydiving you can go to dubai it's close by as compared you know you can go to us for uh, base jumping it's us uh for scuba it's andamans is a good place to go and uh Mountaineering, you can go anywhere. Darjeeling. I mean, I like Darjeeling. Thank you. Thank you, Archana, for these uh, top tips. Um, we are now ready to move on to audience questions. So let's get the first one. Okay. Um, what is the story behind your Guinness World Record? Uh, how did the idea of underwater exhibition come around? Okay, uh, again, uh, we have been seeing, we saw somebody, I mean, there was one guy who had made all the paintings. So I was doing scuba, so we, we were just chatting and this thing came, why, why can't we do something different here, you know? 
and then it clicked and uh, we we hired a pool we just arranged all the paintings everything and then call some of the people and it was uh, yeah that was basically that's something different basically you know and encourage more and more people into sky uh, scuba diving also. it's a good encouragement at the same time so tell us more about this underwater uh, exhibition. Okay, this was done in Jammu. We had uh, hired one uh, Jammu club. So there me and one more guy, uh, Vikrant, were there. So he was who was into painting and stuff. He had his painting. So we took painting. It was not, it is not easy, you know, to arrange everything underwater. And moreover, in uh, fresh water, it's not easy. So I remember we went uh, night, we went to Jammu morning, early morning, we started arranging everything. If one doesn't work, then again, you have to, you go underwater, wear your sets, go underwater, arrange everything and uh, then call people and then take people along. And then the media was there, everything was there. So it was like, uh, do something different. And uh, yeah, this is how it all happened. And it was a success basically because do you plan one, to do any more of these sorry do you plan to do any more of these going forward yeah we would we would be doing it <laughs> we just and those were handmade paintings basically we never took the other ones so we so let's see whoever has more we will we'll go ahead and do more yeah i would really look forward to uh, uh, that it seems like a very novel idea and definitely yeah. something you could perhaps do more of in different parts of the country. Yeah, and it looks so nice. It looks so colorful. And it was amazing, actually. And the, in fact, to arrange also was, uh, was a challenge, but nice. It was good. And we just loved doing it. Um, we're ready for our next question. Um, how did you prepare for uh, this, your skydives? Uh, is there any place in India to get trained for this? I'll be very honest. I have not skydived much in India. I've just made one or two jumps. That too with the naval people. I uh, In India there is, but then I don't, I don't recommend, to be very honest. I don't recommend. I always say, okay, fine, because of safety reasons. That's all. There are people, they are very good people who have been here, but then for safety reasons, I always say just go out and do it. And so if not in India, where where would you recommend if somebody wanted to uh, pick this up Canada. as a training? Yeah, yeah, they can go to Dubai, they can go to US. US, I went to, I went to Paris Valley, California. Amazing, amazing place. Amazing people. I mean, I used to love being with them. And very helpful. Um, all right. Thanks, Arjuna. Next question. Um, what has been your favorite jump till date? My flag jump. 201st jump was my flag jump with the Indian flag. That was nice. And there's a story also behind this. <laughs> Again, uh, when I, I started going in 2007, that time not many women were into all this. So uh, people, I, I had a couple of friends in US who are amazing people, amazing. I just love them. So they they don't they didn't know much about India. They had just heard stories, you know, that Indian women are not much into it. And so I said, no, they are into it. They said, no, they are not. So then it was like I said, OK, now I want to do something different, you know, represent Indian women in US. So then I thought of this flag jump. And I remember when I had gone, I had just done 160 jumps. So I had to come make 200 jumps and then attempt this flag jump. So I did 40 jump and 41st jump was my flag jump. And people really helped me because the photographer, everything was arranged so nicely. Everything was done. And trust me, when I, I just jumped with this flag, Indian flag it was looking amazing and people came to me and they congratulated me and they said Indian flag was looking so nice and the best part was they helped me you know in holding the flag so that it doesn't touch the ground 
I mean, amazing it was. This is giving me goose flesh, Arjuna. Thank you for uh, sharing that story. And thank you for asking the question. Uh, I think this may just be my uh, the highlight of the last uh, hour that I've been chatting with you. Um, I think we have uh, one last question. Uh, you spoke about not indulging in overthinking. Uh, yeah. What is a good way for people to break free from habitual overthinking? Okay. Uh, meditate. Meditate is good. Listen to music. I mean, you have one thought. Okay, fine. Just nullify that thought. You don't have to overthink. You have to just nullify. How you do you nullify? It is different. Everybody has different ways of nullifying it. Like I, at times, I listen to music. I go out with my friends. I do meditation. I go to gurudwaras or to temples. So everybody's got different ways. You have to find what suits you. But meditation definitely is one of the main things. But yours is what makes you happy. Just get into that at that point of time. Because I'll tell you, you are important to yourself, nobody else. First thing is you have responsibility towards yourself. Then comes the other person, as I said. If you love yourself, you'll be able to love other people. If you don't love yourself, you don't know what love is all about. What you have, you'll give that. What are you inside? That will reflect in your personality. They're small, small things, but they mean a lot to me. Archana, thank you so much. I uh, am truly honored to have been able to have this conversation with you. And on behalf of all Googlers who are listening in, who will listen in later, and uh, the community at large who's going to uh, hopefully get access to this talk, thank you very much. You are truly, truly inspiring. And um, at least I will walk away from this conversation uh, with the intent to really find a way to let go uh, and to stop overthinking uh, and to um, just focus uh, on a lot more self-love and a lot, lot less thinking. So thank you so much, Arjuna, once again, for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All the best. <laughs>